So the first step we're going to do is we're going to make sure the battery is okay. Makes a lot of sense. You want to make sure you're getting enough power to your starter motor and to make sure that it's turning over and you have enough juice to actually get the spark. So first, just make sure the connections are okay. You know, these could wiggle loose, especially if they're loose to begin with. They could just start jostling a little bit more. So for me, those look good. To test it, luckily I got this one off of Amazon. It was about 40 bucks and it's uh, really cool and um, it really works out and I can just push this button and it tells me that what my battery is at and that's exactly what I'm looking for about 12.9 about to 13 and down to the lowest would be 12.7 before you start worrying that maybe your battery is going out and that's why you're having the issue of why you're not getting the spark and why your engine's not starting so if you don't have one of these cool fancy batteries like I do, where you can just push the button and get the reading, you can just take it manually with the multimeter. And it's very easy. You just set it to DC and take your red probe and put it on the positive. And the negative is going to go onto the negative or on the black. And there we go. I got the same reading, that 12.98. So I know the reading on my battery is good and I double checked it with the multimeter. So I know my battery is good. So the next step is going to be checking the ground. To check that one, we just want to hook it up to the red, the positive terminal of the battery, and we're just going to hook it up onto the green or the ground on that one. And you can see the same thing. So I have a good ground onto the engine. I know for sure that I'm getting a good ground from my battery to my engine. And I can test it over here also. If you can see, I can put it onto just the, you know, the valve cover plate, and I get the same thing. I can put it onto the carburetor and same thing. I'm getting that ground transferring from the engine over to the carburetor. So I know definitely for sure I'm getting a ground. And I get the same thing as if I come over here. So I know the ground is good. So we got that checked off. Okay, so the next thing to check is to make sure that the kill switch up on the handlebars is actually working. This, is actually, this can be done really easily with mine especially because it just has the run and it has or the off and then the run. So with mine, if I turn on the switch, which creates the power, and you can see that we do have power because the gauge is actually engaged or you know they activate. So with it on, and come over here, and it's off, I try and start it, I get nothing. It just doesn't work. So if I turn it over to run and try the same thing. See, it works. So I know for sure that my kill switch is working. So this test is going to test out to see whether the spark plug is actually working or not. You would actually do this test to actually figure out if you have spark or not. Because like I said, the three things you need to actually get the engine running is you need spark, you need compression, and you need fuel. So with this one, you just um, take the spark plug out of the engine, and it's still connected to the boot, if you can see just right on the end and you set it up next to the engine just on like the cover or somewhere where it's grounded and we already checked that one earlier we saw that the engine is grounded so we know that we're going to have that positive and negative connection I'm going to turn on the engine and try and turn it over and if we were getting spark you would be able to see just the blue little spark just cr um, crossing from where the white is onto where the tip is so I'll try that out right now and show you that I don't have spark And there we go. See, I'm not getting anything. So I know for sure that I don't have spark. So to test the coil, there is two very easy tests that we can do to make sure that it's functioning or not. Now when we tested the battery, we checked with volts. Now we're going to switch from volts over to ohms or resistance to make sure that from point A to point B, there's a connection. And that's all that that's going to do. So to test the coil, so just for reference, here's the spark plug boot. The spark plug goes right on the end and then connects to the engine. And then it runs up, as you can see, and it runs into this kind of cylinder shape right here. This is going to be the ignition coil. Now to test it, all we're going to have to do is disconnect these two leads right here, or two, you know, the connections. We have a green and a black. And then on the wires, you want to just make sure that you have them connected when you, or make sure you reference what they are when you reconnect them. And mine's very easy, green, 
to green and it's going to be black and the wire is kind of a black and yellow so I know exactly how to connect them back up when we're done so I'll disconnect them and expose these terminals right here and this is very common for the GY6 engines but on other engines they may have like a pigtail where they just have you know one of the connectors but it's going to be the same thing you just want to expose these two connections so from there I'm going to go over to my voltmeter and I'm going to set it to ohms as I said and that's going to check resistance and right now I'm going to put it on 200 and it's going to be the lowest setting and I'll just take my leads over here and it doesn't doesn't matter which one you do you just connect one to one and another to another and you should get a reading and with this one we're going to be looking at anywhere from 0.3 to 0.5 ohms so next what we're going to do is check the secondary part of the coil and that's what actually sends it from the top down to the spark plug wire so from here that's why I had it disconnected I'm just going to leave one of the probes on there it doesn't matter which one and change my volt multimeter over to 20k since we're going to get a larger reading and this one is going to be anywhere from 10 to 14 the number really doesn't matter too much you don't want it too low or you're going to have like an issue but it's just telling you that yes you are getting that connection so for this one as I said the what is it the secondary coil just took it up to any end and then we're going to put this one on there and see if we get a reading on it and as we are yes we are we're getting a reading or as I said you can switch them we'll put the red over here put it in the boot and see same reading so it's just verifying that the coil is working there is no break in it so I am getting electricity from point A to point B that's all we're checking so we just eliminate the emission coil and the spark plug boot so we are getting electricity from the top down here and it is getting sent down to the boot and to the spark plug so that is not the issue we know that is good so we're going to keep moving on and see if where we can find that issue we're having of not getting any spark to the spark plug wire for the engine so next we're going to move to the starter solenoid okay so this next test is going to um, test the starter solenoid uh, all this one does is it's right here and it takes this um, red wire and this was the red wire that's connected directly to the um, red terminal of the battery so it just runs directly down and into the battery so from here all it is is a big on off switch pretty much and you get the power going in from the battery and then when you have your you know kill switch on and you try to start the engine all it does is tell it to open up and turn to the on position and allow the energy to flow from here down to this one on the other side so to test this all we need to do is try running the battery or running the scooter again so first I'm gonna use my multimeter again and I'm gonna change it over to DC volts it's not gonna be the resistance it's actually gonna be measuring the voltage so I just come over here and turn it over to 20 DC and I have my black of my multimeter connected to the ground of the terminal of the battery so I'm gonna get that the flow of energy so from here I can just test it hit it right on here and I should be getting a reading of the 12.8 12.9 uh, 12.88 so it's still good so I come over here to this side and I hit it on there and I get nothing so that doesn't mean anything right now that just means that I don't have the electricity flowing from this side to that side so I'm gonna turn on the scooter and I'll try cranking it over and there we go I'm getting juice from this side down to this side while I'm cranking it over uh, other people try connecting um, or shorting it out where you put the um, a screwdriver on both sides and it's going to allow the power to flow from this end to this end but it's not telling you if this is actually working or not this kind of test where you're actually testing the juice coming in and then the juice coming out is actually going to tell you if it's working or not so now I know for sure my starter solenoid is working so the next test is going to be testing the CDI or just the computer and this one's going to be mine I have an aftermarket one it's an advancing timing if you watch my CDI episode I explain them a little bit better but for this we just want to test to make sure that the CDI or the computer of the scooter 
is actually working. And as I said, there's an actual a video about 30 minutes long, and it'll show you how to test exactly to see if it's working or not, and rule out every single pin down here on the plug. But instead of doing that, spending half an hour, hour, trying to go through that video and try and test every plug easier, just get your spare and plug it in and fire up the engine again, uh, you know, the spark plug next to a ground part and see if you get the spark. That's the easiest way you can do it and see if it works or not instead of going through and seeing if you can uh, figure out if it's working or not. So we know the CDI is good since we tried that with the spare. We're still not getting a spark when we try it against the ground. We tested the coil and the spark plug boot. We know this is working and it's actually um, um, transmitting the electricity down from the bottom up or from up down and we know that the starter solenoid is good since it is passing electricity from the battery over to where it goes to the starter motor so the only thing left that we can um, test to see if we why we're not having the spark or not is going to be the stator and that's actually kind of like the alternator for the um, scooter and it generates the power but it also tells the engine exactly where the cylinder is when it's going up and down so to test that we're going to go to the other side and we're going to um, see what if it's good or not so to test the stator the first thing we're going to do is we need to locate the wires that run from the stator up to the wiring harness so to do that it's very easy I'm on the right side of my bike right now you know I got the exhaust dipstick as you can see and this is going to be the fan area so from here the stator is going to be underneath the fan so just look for the set of wires that come out from the back right here so we found them right here and all we need to do is trace it up into the bike and it loops around as you can see I'm going to swing on to the other side and I'm still pulling on it so I found it on this side it loops around comes back and here we go so it plugs in right into here we're going to have three of them yours might be a little bit different I have a three phase one that's an electrical upgrade that I did so it's going to have the three outputs and it's going to have a ground it's going to have the exciter coil and it's going to have the pickup coil which is going to be the blue one the exciter coil is going to be the red and the black one and we're going to test these by unplugging them and um, seeing the resistance of them and um, basically all these do is the yellow wires are the power output and it's going to be sending it to the um, battery and also to your electrical settings and green is ground but on some of them you might have a black and a white one and the um, black one should be the one that goes from the battery to the um, charging or you know from the stator to the battery and the white one is going to be from the stator which is generating electricity over to your accessories but um for that one you don't have to test them we can test it to see if it is uh, um, emitting electricity but the easiest way is just to make sure that the actual coils are working so to test the stator we unplugged it from the wiring harness and that's what we have right here and these are the ones that run from the stator down to the wiring harness that's very important we want to test the actual plugs that are connected to the stator so to do that we're going to set the multimeter back to um, ohms or resistance just to make sure that we have a connection from A to B we have it cooked up right over there so from there first we're going to test the pickup wire and that's going to be the blue one right here as you can see and this is the one that tells the engine exactly where the piston is as it moves up and down so to do that we'll just plug in one of them right here and we'll put it right in the plastic just so it holds it and then for the other one we will put it to the ground which is going to be the green one on the plug right there so we know it's going to be that one so from here we'll plug it in and see we're getting a reading it's jumping up and down but we're getting a good reading of what 15 so we know that the pickup wire is good we have a good connection there so the next thing we're going to do is actually test the red one which is the exciter coil this one is the one that actually powers the CDI it's the red and black it sends electricity from the stator up to the CDI and powers that one so same thing we'll put one of the probes right in there just so it holds on to it and the other one is going to go into the green and we got nothing 
it should come up with a reading, but it's not. So obviously, we got a connection break right in there. So this is telling me that this is where the problem is. I'm not getting power from my stator over to my CDI, so it's not actually powering it up, telling the bike to pretty much fire up. So we found the problem. So next thing we have to do is open up the flywheel and check out the stator. Now that we determined that the stator is what's given me the no spark issue, we're going to have to get down into it and see exactly what the problem is. To do that, we're going to have to take off the fan shroud, we'll take out the fan, we'll take out the flywheel underneath, and we'll be able to see the stator. Now I'm going to go through it kind of quickly since I'm not trying to uh, make a video on exactly how to change a stator, but I will show each step, each process, but it's going to um, just cut from one to another so we can just exactly see what's going on. And there we go. That's going to be the stator. And as we saw, the blue and white wire that we first tested is going to be the pickup. That's going to be one right here. And that's actually goes with the magnet right here. So as it rotates, it tells the engine exactly where the piston is going to be. And then the red wire that we tested is going to be right here. And as you can see, my exciter coil has blown to garbage pretty much. So that was what was not giving or what was giving me the issue and why I was not getting the resistance. Because as you can see, the electricity or you know the current just wasn't going through. It was getting the blockage or it wasn't going from A to B. So that's gonna be my issue. So now I got the stator all back together, everything's all back hooked up and buttoned up. So next, when I hit the ignition, I should be able to get spark on the spark plug. So let's go ahead and try it out, just to make sure that the stator was the problem. And there we go, we saw it fell down, but hopefully you'd be able to see it, that I did get spark now, so I was able to find the problem. So that wraps up my video on troubleshooting of why you have a no spark. So hopefully I'll be able to help somebody. One of the biggest things that I can um, say with this is make sure you have a good charged battery. You wanted to make sure that you know, you're getting that electricity flowing and also make sure you have a good ground. And we tested those both at the beginning. From there, another good recommendation is make sure you have those spare parts. They're um, very cheap to have and um, you can usually get all of them around 50 bucks altogether. So you can get them one at a time, but it's very good to make sure you have them. So you have an extra spark plug, you have an extra coil, you have an extra um, starter solenoid. And then from there, maybe an extra um, um, stator and flywheel if you want. But if not, those are ones that you can't get. So just work through the problem. As I said, you can start from either side. You can start from the spark plug down to the stator or do the stator up to the spark plug. That, the process is the same. It doesn't matter. I just chose to do it from the spark plug down to the stator because I knew already that my stator was bad, but I wanted to make the video and um, try to help somebody else out. So if you liked it, subscribe, comment, like, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you share this with other people too. I'm trying to help other people and make sure that if they have this problem, they can work through it themselves very easily, get that new part, and get back on the road because there's nothing worse than having your ride just sit in the garage, you can't figure out what the problem is, and you get frustrated, and you just abandon it. So. Hopefully I help somebody. Please, share it, like it, all that kind of stuff. And from there, stay safe and keep two wheels on the road.